Hey, I'm Mari Takahashi, and this is the show where we discuss, deliberate, and dissect a whole range of wide topics. You know, last week you guys gave me a lot of good advice, um, and I really appreciate you guys watching. I fixed the lighting and things like that. Um, hopefully I don't have a ring light in my face this time, and that improves the whole show. I honestly had another topic in mind for this week, but COVID-19, novel coronavirus, is really at the top of my mind and probably for you too. The news has swept the world. I can't name another event that's happened in my lifetime at least that's shaken up everyone like this. Like we are all in this together. This sort of thing doesn't happen often in a lifetime. So as a diary, a video diary for myself and hopefully a video that adds value for you, let's do this. Let's talk about it. At the date of this filming, which is March 15th in the United States, just a slice of what is happening, certainly not all of it, but a slice of the global landscape is as follows. Schools across the world are closed or are closing. Spain, like Italy, orders a nationwide lockdown. France closes down non-essential businesses like cafes, restaurants, and movie theaters. Political pundits like Stephen Colbert and Seth Meyers are off the air completely, along with other shows with live audiences like The Ellen Show. And grocery stores are devoid of necessary supplies like food and toilet paper paper because of mass hysteria, panic, and selfish overbuying. People around the world are having to make drastic changes to their daily routines. Uh, brick and mortar businesses that depend on foot traffic will suffer for weeks, for months. Those living paycheck to paycheck are getting hit really, really hard to say the least. University students, especially international and out-of-state students, simply don't have the option of just going back home during school closures. There are just so many of us getting hit hard and I really, really empathize. When it comes to COVID-19, there are plenty of things to argue about, to point fingers at and blame, and with good reason. Your anger, your anxieties, your annoyances, they're warranted. But I want to take this moment to speak with you about the responsibilities that we share in this crisis and there's just one that I'd like to emphasize in this video today. It is the need for social distancing. That's avoiding crowds and being mindful of personal space. And I know we've heard this over and over and over again, but it's really important. I mean, this man wore a giant cardboard circle and although he looks like a mouse popping out of a giant wheel of cheese, he's got the right idea as far as measuring out that distance. No, 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 don't go out buying cardboard to make your own giant cosplay of the sun, please. No, stay home. And let's not forget the cultural shift. I mean, we're all learning how hard it is to not touch our faces and it seems like the entire world is back to being kindergartners learning how to wash our hands all over again. Like, I thought I knew how to wash my hands pretty well. Apparently not. And I wonder, I do wonder, if this vigorous hand washing culture will continue after this pandemic. I'd love to hear your thoughts. What do you think? So, some facts. In the US, the virus is currently spreading at a rate that has the potential to overwhelm our hospital system. What does that mean? As in, too many coming in for coronavirus, not enough resources to take care of them, along with the regular emergency cases that would be coming in without the pandemic, like broken bones, emergencies, heart attacks, etc. We share near identical virus infection rates as Spain and Italy, and they've already ordered a nationwide lockdown. Since the US has yet to order a lockdown, it means we, the citizens, have to quickly come to understand that social distancing is one of the most important things we can do to flatten the pandemic infection curve. That's this fancy curve right here. The reported mortality rate for children, teens, and young people are remarkably low, but that does not give us a free pass to go on with our lives per usual. It's imperative that we understand the damage we can be doing by thinking this way, that it doesn't really affect us. I'll admit I had this exact mentality about the flu shot for years. The thought being, I'm young, I'm healthy, if I get the flu, I'll get over it quickly, it's not that bad. Most seasons, I don't even get sick. Good for you, Mari. Look at you on your high horse. Feels good, huh? Yeah, it took me years to realize how selfish I was being because although I feel like I can get through a season without a hitch, I can be a carrier, transmitting sickness to innumerable people and most horrifyingly, transmitting it to people who are super vulnerable 
to illnesses, not just the elderly. Repeat, it's not just old folks. It's also those who are immunocompromised, aka those with cancer, HIV, AIDS, transplant patients, the list goes on. I have to stop being selfish. We all do. We can use the same analogy when it comes to coronavirus because I'm going to be okay, most likely. We're going to be okay. We might not even show symptoms. Even if we get sick, we'll bounce back. But it's this very cavalier attitude that recklessly endangers the lives of the people we love the most. It's our best friends, our grandparents, our neighbors, and for some of us, our parents. Put that into perspective. Now, I know that a lot of the discussion around social distancing is about staying home, and it's tough for a number of reasons. We all have lives, I get it, but this one time we're hitting the pause button, if it's at all possible, is an absolute necessity. It's tough because the action we must take for the greater good isn't some visible, highly heroic gesture from a blockbuster movie action sequence. To be the hero, to save people's lives, to eradicate this pandemic, we have to just stay home. We have to stay away from one another. This is tough because everyone's situation is different and there are seriously no easy answers here. A large number of people that serve in the medical field have children in school, so who's going to take care of the kids if all the schools are closed so that the hospitals can remain fully staffed? For others, staying home from work might be financially devastating. How can we possibly expect someone to stay home if doing so will lead to financial ruin? If you're in this situation, I'm truly sorry. I'm sorry that our existing system has failed you, and I hope you know people recognize the sacrifice you're making in following the updated recommendations from the CDC. Your actions now will ultimately save your community, and I hope that carries you through the hard times ahead. There's just so much change happening, but I do think that this is a defining moment in our lives, in our history. The next few months will be a different pace, a different tone. We'll all be doing very different things, and out of it, I hope we have more compassion for those around us, a larger sense of community, and more emphasis on how one person doing the right thing can actually make a huge impact. With so many things happening in the world, not just coronavirus, but global warming and things like this, I'm often reminded of the song by John Mayer, waiting on the world to change. Because, man, it's so true. Sometimes we think that problems are just so big that we are waiting for everyone else to, to pick up the slack and do it for us. Each person makes a huge difference, and I hope that we realize this in situations like this and so many others. As I've said, and as I'll reiterate, it's not a walk in the park for a lot of people in the world. It's time away from work. It's money not going into your pockets. It's not flashy and heroic, but you are saving lives. And you know what? That deserves some non-contact high fives, a big socially distant hug, and maybe a gloved pat on the back. There you go. Oh, I don't have a glove on, so. I've included links to some helpful information, including the CDC and the WHO, and also one of my favorite YouTube doctors, Dr. Hope, who does always a great job of deconstructing elaborate terms and concepts for non-medical folks like me to understand complex things. The link in the description is specifically pertaining to his episode around COVID-19, so enjoy. I'm Mari Takahashi, and that's about it for this week on Talk About It. Stay safe, stay healthy, and remember that by taking care of you, you take care of those around you too. I'd love to hear your thoughts, how you're coping, and what sort of things you're doing to combat going stir crazy while under quarantine. And if you'd like to watch my other, let's say my last two videos, check it out over here. Thank you so much and I'll see you next week.